Hi everybody, happy new year, welcome to 2021 and welcome to Millennial Immigrants, the channel where we give you the tips to hit the ground running as new immigrants in Canada. How are you guys doing? Oh my gosh, how has your new year been going guys? We've just been here chilling and obviously our community has grown once more to our new subscribers welcome to our channel and to our old subscribers our fam bam guys you guys already know you're a welcome over here <laughs> so today i am so excited to be filming this video okay guys i'm so excited over the past few days i mean we've been getting a lot of emails about um immigration for nurses to the atlantic part of canada so the atlantic provinces so i'm talking about um newfoundland i'm talking about nova scotia prince edward island and which other one is it again new brunswick and new brunswick right so my husband is behind the camera <laughs> and new brunswick so i did some digging okay and i just came here to present the information to you people to mark your attendance on this channel please hit the like button and make sure if you're just passing by and you love our content subscribe okay so in 2021 now i just want you guys to be really really focused and motivated about your dream to canada especially if you are a nurse um express entry which is a point-based system right it's so competitive and lots of people i know haven't been meeting the um the point based system because of maybe they have like advanced age or they are having english problems or whatever but what if i told you that you can immigrate to canada without express entry yes guys you can immigrate to canada without express entry so this video is just particularly for nurses anybody else can research this information but this this is actually for my nurses on this chat now now the atlantic provinces of canada are running this thing called the atlantic immigration pilot right and basically this pilot is like a is a provincial program right for the four different provinces in atlantic canada and it's a non points based system so it's not a points based system and this is exactly why i love it okay so this program has three different streams we have so for this video i am just going to be focusing on the high skilled program okay on that is atlantic um, immigration pilot okay but before you continue watching this video if you are a nurse i suggest you go watch our last video on how to transfer your foreign nursing license to canada because you're really going to need to know or have that information before proceeding with this all right so now guys the big question is how are you going to be eligible for the high skilled atlantic immigration pilot program and that is why i am here all right according to the government of canada okay their website it says number one you should have work experience so guys for the work experience right it says here that in the last three years you must have worked at least a thousand five hundred and sixty hours that means if you have accumulated that it means that you should have at least been working 30 hours per week all right and it must be in the NOC code of 0A or B. Now, if you're going to listen further, I would explain to you what NOC means. All right. Now, it says that part-time hours or full-time hours can um, count towards this. But it has to be within the same occupation. But it can be with different employers. So, if you are a nurse, you can actually count full-time and part-time hours towards this but it has to be within the field of nursing, okay? Paid um, unpaid internships or volunteering doesn't count. And the most exciting part of this is that 
the work can be either in Canada or outside of Canada. So guys, what are you really, really waiting for? You need to get on this needs to be in an NOC skill type of level 0A or B. Now, NOC means National Occupational Classification. Basically, this is how um, Canada classifies occupations and skill sets. Now, the reason why this even concerns you more as a nurse is that, well, you fit in into either... Um, NOCA or NOCB, all right? That's why this is called a high skilled <laughs> um, Atlantic immigration pilot because as a nurse, you fit in into the required um, NOC codes. Now, if you are a degree nurse, all right, you fit in into NOC type A. And if you're a diploma nurse, you fit in into NOC type B. So this is for both RN and LPNs. Guys, are you really catching the excitement here? Like, there is no discrimination. <laughs> Next requirement on here is that you will need your um, education to be evaluated, all right? Now you'll be wondering, oh, wow, I just got my license. I was evaluated by NNAS already. But the thing is that you guys have to remember that the professional body and IRCC, that's Immigration and Refugees um, Canada, all right, are two different entities and their evaluations are different, okay? After having your education evaluated by NNAS, okay, to get your profession going, to get your license, for this, which is an immigration program, all right, you will need your education to be evaluated by a designated body by the IRCC, which is either WES, ICAS, or ICWAS. The next one, guys, this one, <laughs> this particular one, this particular requirement paper, hey God, it makes me, it makes me really excited. Okay, and it's the English language testing. Guys, you would need to take an English language test for this immigration pilot program. And why I am excited about this is that the scores are actually so low. Like, <laughs> so you're gonna be writing either the CELPIP general, the IELTS general, and if you're going to New Brunswick, which is the um, French side of Atlantic Canada, you would be writing the TCF or the TEF. Now, let me just tell you the scores for the IELTS, okay? So, according to the Government of Canada here, the IELTS general testing for reading is 3.5, for writing, 4.0, for listening, 4.5. For speaking, 4.0. Guys, if this isn't the easiest, okay, the easiest cutoff for English I have seen for IELTS in my life, I don't know. <laughs> so, people of God, you have to speed things up. Like, time is waiting for nobody. Time waits for no one on this stuff. You have to really speed things up, okay? So, your language testing results should be um, not less than two years old. And it must show that obviously that you meet the requirements of the program for funds below in the description box i'm just gonna put a link okay for what you need based on your family size all right canada just wants to find out if you have enough money to support yourself and your family during this immigration process so that you're not a burden to the system and so you do not have recourse for public funds so i'll put it down in the description box so guys here the last requirement would be to have a job offer all right highlighted in purple is the document that your job offer needs to come in as a requirement by the uh, immigration canada there it also says that your job must be offered to you by a designated employer if you keep watching for that i will explain to you um, what a designated employer is and that your job has to be full-time working at least 30 hours per week non-seasonal meaning your job has to be consistent and paid and it has to last for at least one year so let's say for example 
you have transferred your license to the province of Newfoundland, all right, and you are looking for a job, make sure, number one, you are searching for a job with a designated employer. Not all employers are registered under this um, immigration pilot program, all right? There are specific employers that are designated, okay, to hire people under this scheme. So when you actually find a job or get a job offer with a designated employer, your job offer has to come in a specific like way it says offer of employment to a foreign national so it has to come in a specific it has to be drafted in a specific way to actually qualify for this program it also says here like i said before that your employer has to be designated as an employer taking part in the atlantic immigration pilot by the atlantic province where you'll be working all right and they must have a confirmation of designation from the province i'm also going to link down in the description box all right how to find a designated employer and i'm going to do a screen recording as well of how to look for a designated employer because if you get a job offer with an employer who is not designated with the atlantic immigration pilots this is not going to work Okay, so that's the most important part of this whole program is to make sure that your work, your job offer is with a designated employer because if it's not, Canada does not hear, oh, I did not know, I was not aware. I was not aware, I was not aware is not an excuse. It really isn't. Nobody's going to pity you. So make sure you do your due diligence. So I really hope this kind of um, explains a little bit to you guys what this program is about. Like I said, still stay till the end because I'm going to put a screen recording of how to go about navigating the website for this information. If you found this information valuable, please make sure to mark attendance by liking all right and also subscribe to this channel as well people so we can grow this community and my last and final tip is that people to be honest with you where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck for this program is newfoundland and labrador i've said it time and time and time again newfoundland and labrador has what you need i know i've been getting some emails about people wanting to move to nova scotia and new brunswick and all of that well those places are not bad provinces right but for this program and its requirements especially the requirement of wanting you to have a full-time job which is very important you will find it in newfoundland and labrador and I'm gonna show you in the screen recording how you're gonna find that because I actually found a full-time job. <laughs> I actually found a full-time job while digging and that job has been, what, it had been open for a, a while. Like the job doesn't have an expiry date, meaning that you're still looking for people to occupy the position. So honestly, make sure you do your research as well. I'm only a resource, like I've said before. We're not immigration consultants or any of that. We're just people who like to research and help other people out with what we found and with our lived experiences. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, recommendations, please leave it down in the comment section. Communicate with us, ask us questions. Let's bounce off ideas of each other and all of that. Let us know if you are coming to Canada, what province you're really looking at moving to, okay? If you're a nurse, are you looking into the Atlantic Immigration Pilots, all right? Um, and if you are doing it, what stage are you in, you know? And, you know, how is it going? Like, let other people know. Share your experiences with other people in the comment section as well. So, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye!
so hi guys i'm glad you guys stayed to the end um on this page is the atlantic immigration pilots as you guys can see this program was extended for two years and it was announced march 1st 2019 meaning that this program will expire at the end of this year that is why you need to rush it okay now it says well, one of the goals of the program is to create more flexibility for hiring healthcare professionals right so you can see your high demand like you're in high demand all right now to get the noc code here i scroll down to the um scroll down the page where it said uh, international graduate and skilled foreign workers and i clicked on make sure you meet the requirements okay so that i could get uh, the required noc code and what popped up was a summary of all three programs okay but i uh, will be talking about just the atlantic high skill program so what you have here is a summary of what you need like your work experience education your language proof of funds and then i clicked on read the full requirements for the atlantic high skill program all right now what came up for me on this page is the eligibility criteria for high skilled workers all right so now i scroll down to the bottom of the page and um you're gonna see what you need the eligibility criteria as i'm scrolling down you'll see the work experience you'll see education like it was explained in this video you'll see the language testing the requirements for that you see your proof of funds the money that you need for your family size all right and also you'll finally see get a job offer now here where it says get a job offer i clicked on noc this purple highlight here that says noc i clicked on it you know we already talked about what noc is national occupational classification so i clicked on that this page popped up i just scrolled down to the bottom of the page as you scroll down you see the different levels of noc now on the bottom of the page is a search bar I, I searched them registered nurse to get the NOC for registered nurse. And what pops up here is that the registered nurse is a skill type A, like I said. And I typed uh, licensed practical nurse. I typed licensed practical nurse to get the NOC. And what I got was skill type B. So like I said, nurses, you guys are qualified for this program. So get on it. All right, so job offer, finding a designated employer. I just went back, all right? I went back to the page that I came from and clicked on get a job offer. I scrolled down and then I picked the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Now, on the provincial website, you'll find information of designated employers. Okay, remember, you have to be with a designated employer to qualify in the search bar i put in health because i mean i'm trying to look for a healthcare facility so what pops up is eastern regional health authority st john's and labrador grenfell health happy valley gooseby remember these are the places that qualify the location of the places eastern health in st john's and labrador and grenfell in happy valley gooseby so i went to the main site for labrador and grenfell health and clicked on careers just to find out what the job openings were like i scrolled down to scroll down the page and then i clicked on the e-recruits apply online just to find out like what openings are available if i were you guys i would totally be looking at this now on their page you can see here registered nurses i clicked on that and i went down to happy valley gooseby the location of gooseby is what i'm looking for because that is what classifies as a designate and i found a temporary full-time now if i was in this position i would still apply for a temporary full-time provided that the temporary full-time lasts more than one year I think you should be good to go because this program does not specify 
um, if this does not specify if the job is temporary or permanent. It just says it has to be full time, lasting more than one year. So if the temporary full time position that you're being offered lasts more than one year, I'll definitely go for it. My tip for you guys is to focus on rural areas okay happy valley goose bay from what i research is in rural labrador that is what i will be looking at that's the employer that's an employer i'll be looking at rather than an uh, eastern health in st john's because st john's is a city and honestly to get a full-time job in a city guys it's not easy it's actually very difficult they'll take the indigents over you so look for an a rural area because that's where you're needed